Joseph here with another practice test question for you this week. August 25th, it's a beautiful day outside, and if you haven't already, make sure you get some fresh air. Fresh air goes a long ways to making us better developers. How, you might ask? Well, I'm not really sure, other than it clears out our minds, it gets those cobwebs out, and I'm thinking I'm about due for some fresh air today myself. So make sure you get some yourself here today. The practice test question I'd like to cover is discussing, I would say, some of the basics of required JS. And I'm going to put a caveat on, on here that this is not something that you're going to, going to be using every day. In fact, if you are using it every day, you're pro you are almost guaranteed doing something wrong. The point is, is we do have situations where band-aids are required. And I would say this is a band-aid. I tried to write the practice test question like this. I am putting this huge caveat on this video. Um, so then why include it? Well, again, we have time pressures. We have situations where we have to get something fixed quickly. We have a certain set of criteria in which this is, we, we have to actually work within this, where we have a site that's down, whatever. Um, at the end of the day, there this means, this using this indicates we have to do something differently. Um, and ultimately, even as the required JS documentation says, um, this is an opportunity to rethink our design, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. So we're going to get the Band-Aid, and then we're also going to get the big fix solution, something that we're, we always do here at Swift Otter is if the Band-Aid is necessary, very well, but we're always going to be looking at that big fix, the real fix, the right fix, which um, ultimately is going to be the long-term fix, which means we're not going to have to see this problem again. So without further ado, let's take a look at this question here. You are making some emergency changes to two required JS modules. Fallout from the change is a circular reference error when loading the second module. While this is indicative of a problem with the code design, again, emergency and code design, this is a question with a caveat here, folks. Time is of the essence, and you are pressured to get a temporary fix implemented. Question, how do you fix the circular reference error in the second module? So we have three options. Use required JS's lazy method inside its set timeout method. Uh, prefix the first module's path, path with text and eval the code. And third, use the require method referencing the first module along with a callback. So which answer is it? Now, uh, without having to, well, I've, I'm recording this a little later than I normally do. And I've had the pleasure of seeing most of your answers, I believe, are C, which is 100% correct. Um, just doing a quick run through, there is no lazy method. There is a set timeout method which can be used to asynchronously load stuff. But ultimately, if we were to, if there was something along those lines, we kind of bypass the whole required JS loading path system, and that just wouldn't work. Um, text and eval, I, I think actually might work. Uh, <laughs> it's questionable as far as whether that's a good option or not. Well, I know it's not a good option. Again, um, so that leaves us basically with option number three, use the require method referencing the first module um, along with a callback. So. C would be the correct answer in this case. Let's let's talk about this uh, in a little bit more detail. I threw together a really quick example of what this would perhaps look like. Um, we can also see what this looks like in real life as well. Uh, so we've been kind of working on this uh, shipping email uh, project uh, um, through the course of time. We have our, here's our parent, which basically ends up creating an instance of the child here. Um, this child we have require, and then um, it's uh, fetching basically this parent. So in other words, there could be a circular dependency here. Uh, ultimately, this is the way to do it. Now, one thing that's very important to note is that if you have a, just pass in a string here, not an array, it doesn't work. Um, so ultimately, this is basically like a define method, except is this it has a, uh, well, this is basically identical to a define method, except this is designed to run inside the context of your code as opposed to defining a, defining a module itself. Um, one thing to note with this uh, solution as well is our require, um, this is a callback. So technically you could, well, let me just show you like this. You could write something along um, uh, this line, I think uh, like this, um, pull this over here, uh, let, shipping email equals you could do that but the problem is what happens if this hasn't already been loaded like this would technically work uh 
if it has been loaded, but if it hasn't been loaded, we are going to get undefined because this this module does not exist in the Require.js repository. Uh, so you always want to think of this in the terms of a callback. Now, that said, we probably are a approaching the problem wrong. This is fine for a short-term fix, and it helps us to understand the basic mechanics of Require.js, which is why I did this question. But if you have to use this type of a method or this type of logic, I'm going to say that it's, it's probably a 95 times out of 100. So that would be, what, um, 19 out of 20 times uh, that this is going to be incorrect. I mean, I, I, I'm saying that because I'm, there's probably some situation where this is reasonable to use. It makes sense, uh, but in literally every case, it does not make sense. Um, that one case would probably be a very temporary solution, again, to get something fixed out of production. Now, here's the point. Um, if we have a circular dependency, the question is, we, well, we're probably de de relying on something in that parent module. That parent is connected to a child. The child then has to maybe fetch something from the parent, or maybe it's relying on a method from the parent. Relying on a method from the parent is the easiest to resolve. All you do is just rip it out and put it into a separate module. It's as literally as simple as that. Um, and that's pretty much going to be the solution. Um, you're relying on the parent to do too much, or you're relying on one of these modules to do too much. So rip that out and make, instead of it being kind of like a circle here, make it more like a upside down Y, I guess. So we have module, module one, module two, and they both reference this other common module, which maybe has some storage in there, whatever it is, uh, they both reference that same common module. And that's pretty much always going to be the solution to your problem here. So in other words, uh, get rid of that circular dependency by having a, by thinking of it as a Y, or I guess it could be a Y. Like you have the parent, or we have a module one, module two, so parent, child, and then they both reference this other separate module down here. That will be the solution, the real long-term solution to a challenge such as a circular dependency in Require.js.